did vampires really exist? What about Dracula? Where did he used to live? What are the legends associated with him? Let's have a trip into the heart of medieval Valachia 574 years ago and see how today's real Dracula castle looked like in 1450 AD, when Vladim Paler, also known as Dracula, ruled over Valachia and fought the Ottoman Empire. Building this historically accurate castle was no small feat. The only resource at my disposal are today's ruins in Romania. Contrary to popular belief, Vladim Paler did not live at Castle Bran, but in Trgoviste, the capital of Valachia at that time. His most famous castle was the one we focus on today. Located at around 850 meters, around 2800 feet on a narrow ridge in the Carpathian Mountains, made it nearly impregnable. This is Dracula's hideout in the mountains, the castle from Poenari. Let me take you on a tour and show you how I managed to build his castle in Valheim. After looking out for about an hour for a spot which mimics the real ridge in the Carpathian Mountains, I finally found a similar one and flattened it. Next, I started working on the shape and actual dimensions of the castle. It was quite a challenge as today's castle is in complete ruin. A few minutes later, I have managed to get the shape of the castle right and soon started to work on the walls and the towers. The only thing remaining there today is the shape of the tower, so I had to improvise and look at other towers from the same time period, study them and replicate them in the game. Now that I have raised the walls and the towers to get a general idea of how things are supposed to look like, it was time to widen the walls and the rest of the interior structure. There was only one step left, and that is working on the roof and adding details to make it feel more alive. With the building ready and all the details set, it's time for a tour of the castle, just to see where and how did the famous Dracula used to live. Where he would drain his helpless victims of their blood. Nah, I went too far there. Ready? Let's go. Ahead of us lies the only point of access in the castle, the main gate. You can see several loopholes used to range stones and arrows on any enemy foolish enough to attack this castle. Due to its location on the narrow ridge of the mountain, the castle's passages are extremely tight, making it easy to defend in case of a breach. The first structure on the right is the first guard tower, with a sleeping space for the garrison and, on top of that, accessed by a ladder through a wooden trapdoor, we have the top of the tower, which served mainly for defending the castle. Moving on through the narrow passage into the yard, the first building on the left are the kitchens. Food was scarce for the poor those days, but plenty for the rich. Near the kitchen, there was also a small room that served as a storage. In the castle's yard there were living quarters for the peasants who were working in the kitchen and at the castle's maintenance. The second guard tower had a similar rounded shape as the first one, barracks down below with sleeping quarters and a good strategical position up above for defending the castle. It was easy enough for you to aim at the enemy from one of these loopholes, but it was extremely hard for the enemy to hit you behind those walls. The very next step in the main square of the castle were a few medieval execution methods, namely the gallows and the head chopping block. Ouch. I've also added a card for transporting the bodies out of the castle, you know, to be polite. Next, there are again simple living quarters for the inhabitants of the castle, but just adjacent to that was the carpenter, who repaired all the wooden structures of the castle, the one who produced and repaired bows and arrows. His neighbor had an even harder job. The blacksmith and his assistant had to forge, repair and maintain objects, chains and all other metal items. Just around the blacksmith forge there's a tight alley that leads to a tower. This particular tower is called the Lady's Tower and it's associated with a legend that we're going to tap into a bit later. 
standard barracks at the bottom of the tower. On top we have an open tower, the only one at this castle. So they had food, smiths, carpenters, men to defend the castle, but where did the water come from? They were on top of the mountain and they had no wells. Well, I'm glad you asked. This castle had a pretty clever system of gathering the rainwater and storing it into a water basin and in barrels. This tower was called the Cistern. On top of it, there was another area from where guards could have defended the castle. During that period, and because the castle was on top of a mountain, the top of the walls were covered and had dozens of loopholes so they can defend the walls properly. And thus we have arrived at the main keep, which was a three levels observation tower. The rest of the castle was built around it. On the top tower we have Dracula's living quarters. He used to share the room with his wife and mistress, not at the same time obviously. On the same level there are two other rooms, one for children and one for guests, with a small area for sending the brown one down the pipe. Just below his chambers was a small chapel, where Vlad the Impaler and his subjects would pray. This chapel also had small rooms where gold was stored. On the bottom level of the tower were the dungeons. Cells fitted for noblemen, for traitors and spies, various torture devices because it was the Dark Ages and torture was a respected trade. Now that we have fully explored the castle, let's quickly talk about some legends that are associated to this castle by the locals. The first legend is that Dracula forced the nobleman, also known as the boyars, to build this castle for him. He discovered that the noblemen were trying to overthrow him and rewarded them with forced labor and impalement. Since we're on the subject of impalement, thus the name Vlad the Impaler, the second legend tells us that Dracula loved to boost the morale of the enemy by showing them the fruits of his imagination, impaled bodies on long poles rotting in the sun. Remember the Lady's Tower? The third legend is about Lady Anastasia, which was his mistress or his wife. I don't know, 600 year old things are kinda blurry. It is said that during a siege of the Ottoman Empire, Lady Anastasia ran out of her chambers and jumped to her death from the roofless tower known today as the Ladies' Tower. The legend also says that the Argish River, located at the base of the mountain, turned red with her blood. Our fourth legend is about secrets. Who doesn't love a good secret? Let alone a secret that can't save your life. As most castles in the Dark Ages, Dracula's castle had a secret door that led to a tunnel deep in the mountains. In case things went south, Vlad and his family could escape the fortress unharmed. The final legend is about haunted castles. Because today's castle lies in ruins due to an earthquake, many visitors believe the castle to be haunted. They supposedly reported strange drafts, really, on top of a mountain, weird noises and ghostly figures. Given the bloody and horrific things that happened there, I wouldn't be surprised. That's all I have for now, thank you all so much for watching, hope you enjoyed our bloody scary story, let me know what you think down in the comments, and if you want to see more things like this one in the future. Take care of yourselves, eat garlic, wear silver, and stay alive.